Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains. And today we're taking a look at three innovative stocks to consider buying before their upcoming earnings releases next week. And those three stocks are Vertiv, Align Technology, and Dexcom. But before we get into everything, remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast. And make sure to check out our Zacks.com slash promo page for a look in some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into these three stocks to consider buying head of earnings, I quickly just want to roll over the broader market uh, just to give a more context for these three stocks. So the market then, we saw the market dip earlier this week on Tuesday following that big Monday sell-off, which was driven by the rising tensions in the Middle East. And then the NASDAQ dropped about 1.1% midweek. I'm recording this Thursday morning or Thursday, like mid morning, early, early afternoon. So after the NASDAQ's big 1.1% drop on Wednesday, as of recording this, the NASDAQ's up about 0.3%. So trying to fight back uh, as the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ both sit firmly below their 50-day moving average for the first time in 2024. Uh, so the growing fears of in the Middle East and then worries that the Fed won't cut rates are driving the downturn, which was going to happen at some point because larger pullback was just unavoidable, uh, even during a strong bull market, since there's really only so high a market can climb before it has to come back to some longer dated moving averages, just facing that selling pressure. Uh, the market has already, though, cooled off over the last few months, even before this recent downturn. Uh, with the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 kind of steadily marching higher with broken up by those miniature pullbacks to the 21-day. And now that we're below the 50-day, we've already seen uh, the market hit its most, or the NASDAQ hit its most oversold RSI levels since we saw the market bottom in October of 2023. Uh, and it's only down around 5% from its recent peaks. And then if we take a look at the widely tracked CNN Fear and Greed Index, which is a really good uh, kind of indicator for lots of things in terms of the market, uh, it's already tumbled from extreme greed in March to fear. So that can kind of be a contrarian indicator when the market's extremely greedy. Maybe you want to take some profits. And when we're already back to fear levels, maybe that's when you want to start considering nibbling at some stocks. So the most pressing question in the near term is what catalyst might trigger a flush down to, say, the 200 day or the 21 week or spark a rally uh, outside of geopolitical tensions, which are really tough to predict. Uh, especially I'm, I'm not going to be able to give any insights in these broader geopolitical tensions at the moment. Uh, the most likely candidate seems to be tech earnings. We saw Taiwan Semi report on Thursday morning and Netflix is out after the bell on Thursday. And then we kind of they kick off a stretch of huge tech names over the next week plus. So it could be the tech either if they're able to really impress, we, we see the bulls take back over, or if not, maybe we get a, a larger pullback down to some longer data moving averages. But that's kind of where the market sits at the moment. And if you're a longer term investor buying into some of this near term weakness, if you're planning on holding for a year, year plus, or maybe even a decade, you don't need to get into the market timing game. But we've already seen the market pull back rather quickly and to go for some really overheated levels on some indicators to uh, pretty you could say almost oversold at a certain point. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at the first of our three stocks that are reporting during uh, next week. And the first is Vertiv, which trades in the ticker VRT. It reports its first quarter 2024 results before the market opens on Wednesday, April 24th. Vertiv is a stock that has more than doubled the S&P 500, or excuse me, more than doubled uh, NVIDIA over the last 12 months and bl obviously blown away the market as well. Uh, this is driven by Wall Street's growing appetite for anything AI related. Uh, Vertiv provides investors the ability to benefit from this broader AI investment super cycle without then having to pick, say, individual winners in the artificial intelligence world, which is kind of hard to know at the moment uh, because it's kind of a high tech picks and shovel type play for the AI world. So we're going to get into the broader pitch for Vertiv. Uh, the world runs on big data at this point, and that is Vertiv's pitch to Wall Street and its clients that the world depends on the data that we power and cool. That's kind of their tagline. So the rapid rise of cloud computing, AI, cryptocurrencies, and cutting edge technologies that we haven't even thought of yet are requiring an increasingly enormous amount of data and energy. And what Vertiv does is their po portfolio of power, cooling, and IT infrastructure solutions uh, service and operate across data centers, communication networks, commercial and industrial facilities, and beyond. And they 
just kind of help everything keep running as smoothly as possible. Uh, some of its categories include critical power, thermal management, racks and enclosures, and monitoring and management. The Ohio-based company services range from DC power and electrical reliability to safety and compliance, and its clients range from enterprises uh, to small and medium-sized businesses across a range of uh, spec aspects of the economy. So we have healthcare, telecom, tech, retail, education, and beyond, kind of on and on and on. Everyone's a tech company at this point. Uh, Vertiv expects the push for greater energy efficiency across data centers uh, to boost its liquid cooling technology since it thinks that more traditional air cooling systems cannot effectively cool these new high-density racks that are jam-packed with CPUs and GPUs. It's expanding inside prefabricated and modular data units as well. Uh, as data centers uh, expand around the world, and its micro data centers offer all-in-one solutions for power, cooling, monitoring, and racks. The company in early December agreed to acquire a liquid cooling infrastructure solutions firm to kind of bolster its ability to develop and help the deployment of AI at scale. It also even has a partnership with the AI chip superstar NVIDIA to help solve future data center efficiency and cooling challenges. So overall, yeah, that's kind of Vertiv's pitch is that it's a it's going to help the world of big data keep running and AI is going to be even using an endless amount of big data. So looking at their growth, the company went public in early 2020 uh, and it posted 14 percent revenue growth during its first two full years. And then it grew its revenue by 21 percent in fiscal 2023. The company's organic orders climbed by 23 percent in the fourth quarter and it closed the year with a record backlog of five point five billion. And its CEO said at the time that it sees tremendous opportunity ahead as data centers need, as the data center needs of AI drive additional market demand. So looking ahead, we're calling for 12% growth this year to get up to about 7.7 .7 billion, and then another 12% growth in 2025 to get up to about 8.6 billion. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for 33% adjusted earnings growth in 2024, and then another 30% growth in 2025. And overall, the company's earnings outlook has improved significantly uh, recently and over the last year plus, and it's topped their estimates by an average of 30% in the trailing four quarters. And its overall earnings revision positivity helps it land a Zach's rank number one strong buy at the moment. And if we look, so over the last year, its outlook for 2024 has climbed 72%, and its outlook for 2025 is up 105% from $1.50 per share to $3.07 per share at the moment. So really impressive bottom line growth outlook uh, that keeps churning higher and higher for Vertiv. Uh, overall, its shares have surged about 275% in the last three years to outpace technology, uh, while well, blow away technology is up 20%. This includes a seven or 575% run during the past 12 months, Crush NVIDIA, which is up just 210%, not just, but Vertiv is up as I said, 575%. It's currently trading uh, right above its 21-day moving average. It finds some finding some support there, and it's already up 75% so far in 2024 as it keeps finding uh, buyers at that 21-day moving average. It just bounced above that level again uh, as I'm recording this, and it's trading roughly at neutral RSI levels. Uh, the, in terms of uh, its valuation, it trades at a discount to its computer IT services industry at 32.5 times forward 12-month earnings versus 36.1 for its industry. So it's a solid bang for your buck there considering it's crushed its industry. And then its uh, peg ratio, which factors in its longer-term earnings growth outlook, sits at 1.2, which represents a 60% discount to... Uh, its industry in 36% value versus X tech sector and a discount to NVIDIA and other big names. So Wall Street overall is really bullish on the stock with nine of the 10 brokerage recommendations that we have at Zax coming in at strong buys. It's obviously not as flashy of a name as say NVIDIA or some of these other artificial intelligence darlings, but its offerings are going to play a key role kind of in the background of big data and AI for years and years to come. And yeah, as I said, it's its job is to keep the data-driven AI now driven economy running as smoothly as possible around the clock. Uh, it is worth noting that I own Vertiv personally, uh, so just full disclosure there. And now moving on to another stock of the three we're going to dive in today, that is Align Technology, which trades the ticker ALGN. Its first quarter 2024 results are due out on April 24th as well. 
So overall, the Align is the company behind Invisalign, Invisalign, the company that makes those clear uh, braces. In just the personal story, I actually I had braces as a kid, and then didn't wear my retainer long enough. And then before my wife and I got married, I just got a little. I had a gap kind of come back into my front two teeth, so I used Invisalign for about eight months just as a little corrective thing. So that's just I have personal use with it, and I, it was a great product. Product, uh, that kind of blended in when you're worried about, say, getting braces and not not when normal people are getting braces, say, when they're teenagers. So uh, I, I had the product and I really thought it did a great job. So we'll get into a little bit more about what they do and kind of how they're expanding their market beyond just someone like me who wanted to get some tiny corrective thing done. Uh, so the firm's clear aligners have permanently reshaped the orthodontics industry. And it grew its revenue at a really impressive rate over the last decade plus. And then it had a boom year during COVID. Then the stock came under pressure against that really hard to compete against stretch and cooling sales. The company faced headwinds kind of across the broader industry as people were trying to deal with just, as I said, that boom against COVID. Uh, And now, though, they're turning things around a bit and the stock might be worth considering at some of these beaten down levels. So overall, uh, the advanced clear aligner system has shaken up the orthodontic space over the last 20 plus years as people look for viable alternatives to those traditional metal braces. Uh, it works hand in hand with dentists and orthodontists to help its customers through the entire process from start to finish. And it's really succeeded or its success overall, I guess, has helped uh, inspire competitors. Uh, we have Candid, Smile Direct Club, though, and those companies aren't doing particularly well, especially Smile Direct Club, which is actually going out of business, uh, which shows that they had a great idea that people wanted to copy, but Align was able to show that they are the dominant player in the space. And it's actually great to see that there was demand for these companies to kind of try to undercut them and go all digital, but in direct to consumer, but people don't want to necessarily get their teeth fixed only via mail. So it's nice to see that Align's business of working hand in hand with dentists, office and orthodontics where people still go into the office and get their teeth scanned and uh, is, is something that's more viable long run. Everyone wants to do direct to consumer, but if you're trying to mess around with things as sensitive as your teeth, maybe you don't want it all just shipped in the mail. Uh, so Align has helped treat roughly 17 million patients with its Invisalign system and it's expanded its reach Uh, to include some digital services offerings as well, which is more of the scanning technology we'll get into in a bit. Uh, The company has has also expanded its reach with teenagers, which is key uh, to attract people instead of maybe people who are getting braces later in life or doing other corrective things from braces they had before to get into a demographic that would normally go for traditional metal braces. It's it's great to see them expanding with that area as well. It's also expanding its international reach. Uh, and then last quarter, the firm unveiled what it called a breakthrough interoral scanner with three times wider field of capture in a 50%, 50% smaller wand that delivers faster scanning, higher accuracy, and superior visual, visualization. Excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, that's just all the these high-end tech things are doing where they, they scan your teeth. It is wild when you get it done in person. Uh, and that's how they're able to shape these tiny little Invisalign systems that go in your teeth where from a distance you can really not tell they're even in up close you can but I remember going out with them for first couple times uh, and people didn't notice until I said something or had to take them out to say eat if you're out to dinner or something like that Uh, so looking back over the last several years the company did 22% growth in 2019 then came into a little bit of a rough patch in 2020 that was COVID effective up 3% and then it went wild in 2021 as everyone had extra money in their pocket and said you know if I haven't been wanting to get my teeth fixed let's do it now they posted 60% sales growth in 2021 which was really difficult to compete against period so they they saw their sales slip about 6% in 2022 but then they're climbing back up they up climbed 3% last year in 2023 and looking ahead, we're calling for about 5% revenue growth in 2024 and then getting back to solid double-digit growth of 11% uh, in 2025 to get up to about $4.5 billion, which would put it well ahead of the growth it did or the sales it posted in 2021 when it did about uh, 3.95. So getting all the way up to $4.5 billion in 2025. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for 9% adjusted earnings growth this year and then 14% adjusted earnings growth next year. 
and a line currently lands a Zach's rank number two buy, driven by some of its bottom line uh, positivity or earnings revisions positivity. Overall, the stock's up over 2,300% in the last 15 years and 500% in the last 10 years. That said, though, the stock's up just about 8% in the last five. It's gone on some wild runs, uh, and it's now trading 60% below its peaks, with the stock up still, though, 11% year to date. So trending somewhat in the right direction. At the moment, it is trying to find some buyers before it has to test its 200-day moving average. That said, though, it did complete that bullish Golden Cross, where the 50-day trend line climbs above the 200-day, and that happened earlier this year in 2024 in March of 2024, so just last month. So that's a positive sign. And then longer dated chart, it is trying to find some support recently after a little bit of a downturn alongside the market at its 50-week moving average where it seems to be finding buyers there as well. So those are some longer dated trends, trend lines to be focused on if you're more of a technical trader. But as I said, it's trading 60% still below its all-time highs. So if you're a longer-term investor, and you're bullish on the business, It's you don't need to necessarily try to time it perfectly uh, for, say, getting in right before the, the exact right time. Overall, Wall Street's still relatively high in the stock. So of the 12 broker, brokerage recommendations, we have seven are coming at strong buys with one more buy, two holds, and then one sell and one strong sell. So overall, still bullish on the stock. Uh, it's trading at 37.7 times forward earnings which is right at its 10-year median and 60% below its peaks. Uh, so overall, Align uh, is a, a great longer-term play. Uh, it's obviously faced some adversity recently. I, a lot of it had to do with just the wild COVID year in 2021 when everyone got their teeth fixed all at once. So there's huge pull forward there. Uh, in long-term, getting your teeth fixed likely won't go out of style. And they're able to expand internationally and get into that teen demographic and replace traditional braces for more and more people. There's certainly long-term upside for Align Technology. So certainly worth considering heading into their earnings report next week. And now we're going to close with uh, Dexcom, which trades in the ticker DXCM. They are set to report their first quarter 2024 results after the market closes on Thursday, April 25th. Dexcom is a connected medical device standout. It's posted really steadily impressive year-over-year -year growth uh, as more people in the U.S. and globally suffer from diabetes. The company posted uh, yeah, strong growth over the last several years, uh, though it is trading now 17% below its 2021 highs, even though it stands out in the connected health world uh, and stands to become kind of the, the center focus of the medical field going forward, maybe. Is that connected health? Uh, at least you hope for more and more people. Uh, plus, they're able to rebound pretty heavily off their October low. So heading in the right direction, though, while still trading 17% below their 2021 high. So kind of let's get into a little bit more about what Dexcom does. They make continuous glucose monitoring systems designed for people with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. It allows people with diabetes the opportunity to place a small sensor on their bodies to help them continuously monitor their glucose levels in real time and avoid those dreaded finger pricks. So users, caregivers, and others then can monitor uh, those levels via various compatible smart devices and wearables. The goal is to help its users make better decisions in the moment for their most accurate care, just manage diabetes more with confidence. And, uh, its continuous glucose monitoring systems are part of, as I said, that connected health revolution that should become the standard of care for lots of people going forward, and their addressable market is huge. Roughly one in 10 people in the U.S. already have diabetes, according to the CDC, and far more already have pre-diabetes in the U.S. And it's not just a U.S. problem now. Uh, roughly one in 10 people globally are living with diabetes and counting. And we should note that the company is expanding its reach far beyond the U.S. as well. Then the firm said on March 5th, some potentially really big news that uh, – it, uh, excuse me, I'm missing their little announcement. Yeah, so it announced today that the FDA had cleared its Stelto uh, by Dexcom, which is the first glucose biosensor that doesn't require a prescription. So there, they said there are approximately 25 million people in the U.S. living with type 2 diabetes who do not use insulin and who can benefit from continuous glucose monitoring technology. So it said today that the Dexcom G7 is available for them 
with a prescription and now it's cleared for use without a prescription will make it even easier for more of the population to access that leading glucose monitoring technology and will provide the option for those who have insurance as well. So it's now over the counter for a lot more people, which is a, a great kind of new avenue for growth for Dexcom. So looking ahead, we're calling for over 19% revenue growth in 2024 and then another 19% growth next year to go from 3.62 billion in 2023 all the way up to 5.2 billion next year. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for 16% adjusted earnings growth in 2024 and then 26% growth next year. For reference, this would come on top of 25% average revenue expansion in the trailing four years, including 25% growth last year. And they had even stronger growth before that. And then we saw the company grow its adjusted earnings by 75% in 2023. So impressive double digit top and bottom line growth on top of what's already been a really long term stretch of big growth for Dexcom. And the company has easily topped our earnings estimates over the trailing four quarters for an average beat of 32%. Overall, its earnings revisions activity is trending in the right direction, uh, though it lands a Zach's rank number three hold at the moment. If we look over the last year, it's 2024 earnings per share estimates up 20 percent and it's 2025 estimates also up 20 percent. So really impressive, steady growth on uh, terms of its earnings outlook uh, improving over the last year. Plus, in terms of its share price performance, it's up roughly 5,300 percent in the past 20 years and 1,500 percent in the past 10 years. Uh, more recently, it's up about 375% over the past five years. It's gone on a wild ride over the last several years with the the big sell-off in 2022 and then some big up and down runs for the last year plus. It's currently trading 17% below its highs and 10% below its average X price target. And this is despite the fact that it's already up 55% in the last six months and 8% year to date. It's currently trying to find some buyers as it slips below its 21-day moving average, but it's trading still solidly above its 50-day. And then if we look a little bit longer term, it's trading above its 21-week moving average again and its 50-week moving average. And we saw its 21-day, or excuse me, 21-week moving average cross above its 50-week trend line. So that's a positive sign as well and still as i said long-term upside as it trades below its highs and its uh current average zax price target and it also trades at a 20 percent discount to its own three-year median uh that said though it is a little bit uh overheated it's not anything in terms of a value stock it's trading at 70 times forward 12 month earnings so that could be kind of wall street still wondering if they can jump back into the stock, especially with the interest rate environment. It just kind of it makes these big growth names a little bit less attractive. But if you're a longer term investor who has the ability to kind of look beyond the fact that it's still trading at such a high earnings multiple and Wall Street's been willing to pay it for a long time, uh, worth considering Dexcom as a ability to ride that wider connected health world and uh, the fact that diabetes has just become so prevalent and only continuing to grow. Uh, Wall Street's also still super high on the stock with 18 of the 21 brokerage recommendations that we have coming in strong buys. So overall, these are three names uh, to consider buying Ahead of next week's earnings, though, if you want to wait until after the report, nothing uh, about getting in right before the report. If you're trying to get in and out, it's always risky. So it's more just to put these stocks on your radar before the reports. And if you're a longer term investor, you can either wait until after or buy right now. Uh, you don't need to try to do the exact market timing game, which is extremely, extremely difficult. So that does it for this episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at Zach's. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.